Join me as I make meals from my pantry and use up canned goods, frozen goods, and things that I'm doing for my pantry challenge. If you're new here, I'm Suzanne, and I like to make videos about homemaking and life on our farm. I started out by getting inspired from my 1955 edition of the Fanny Farmer cookbook. This cookbook is one of my favorites and there are so many economical meals in it. And these old vintage cookbooks literally have every recipe you could possibly think of. So I'm going to be taking this pack of chicken legs and I'm going to make three dinners out of it. I'm starting out by making a recipe called chicken fricasse, but it's essentially making a flavorful broth and at the same time cooking these chicken legs. So I'll be frying the chicken legs in bacon fat and this pack of chicken legs only costed me $8.95 for five legs. And after that, we'll be adding some celery, shallots, bay leaves, and peppercorns. And then we'll be adding two quarts of water. We're going to cover this and cook it for an hour and a half, salting it halfway through. Next, I need to strain the liquids from the solids. And then I'm going to be taking the meat off of the bones and trying to clarify the broth. I didn't quite do this right. I probably should have used more layers of cheesecloth and maybe dampened it first because it kept falling in. So I did my best and uh, it made a bit of a mess, but we got the job done. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I am doing a pantry challenge. And it's also really hard for us this time of year financially because startup costs every year for farming can be a lot, especially when you need new equipment and you need to order seeds. So I'm really trying my best right now to make the most of what I have. And we have a lot of food right now. We have so much. So here are my carrots and parsnips. I've got a few beets in here and I'm going to be cleaning these up, washing them and taking the stem ends off. And this is what I have to use up right now. I have a lot of these in my cooler and I'm just putting them on the table to dry and I've got a fan right above. So I turned that on and that way I can put these into a bag into my fridge and they're not going to go kind of slimy and gross on me. Between working on cleaning up all of those root vegetables and picking through all of this meat, it was actually quite a bit of work and I feel like this day was mostly a prep day and I did end up making a soup for dinner with these ingredients and I also prepped some of them for the following day. For tonight's dinner, I'm making a mulligatawny soup, which is a chicken curry type soup. And I'll be using one of my jars of broth. 
And back in the 50s, the women used fat and drippings from all of their meats. So we're skimming the fat off the top of our broth. And we're going to use that to fry our onions and celery and garlic before adding the other ingredients. I thought this was a genius idea and I'm excited to try that again in the future. In the pot, I'm frying up some shallots, garlic, and celery. To that, I'm adding about a quarter cup of butter because I'm gonna be making a roux. So I'll be adding three teaspoons of curry powder, a teaspoon each of garlic powder and ginger. And I added some hot chili flakes. These were really hot and the soup did end up a little over the top spicy, but that's okay. <laughs> I'd add about half that much. And then I added about a tablespoon of salt. And I just let these spices cook a little bit in the fat before adding my flour. And I added about a quarter of a cup of flour. I love to get inspiration from the recipes in the vintage cookbooks, but what I found with the dinner recipes is that oftentimes they are quite simple and they didn't use a ton of seasonings. And so I like to kind of get creative and I always just add what I want to add and I just use the recipe as a base for the inspiration. So that's what I did with all of the recipes. But if I'm baking or making a dessert, I'll generally follow the recipe to a T. To the pot, I added some of the chicken that I separated from the bones. I'm also adding this beautiful broth. And I also had some broth left in the fridge that I needed to use up. So I put that in as well. And then I also added my chopped parsnips and carrots. And then I added about a quarter of a cup of rice. Now in the original recipe, it actually recommended to cook rice on the side and then spoon some of it into your dish. So I wonder how that would have been, but I just decided to add it straight to the pot. I also added a quart of tomato sauce that I canned. And then I added a package of frozen chopped peppers. And these are peppers that we grew ourselves. And I actually have a freezer full of them. So this is something that I really want to use up. And it actually added so much flavor to this soup. It was incredible. Now on the side here, this is actually a pot of parsnips that I pureed with the liquid and I'm using this to make parsnip bread. I had the idea of making a parsnip bread instead of a potato bread. So I really wanted to see how this would turn out. So I added my sourdough starter and a tablespoon of sugar. And then I added enough flour just to make it kind of like a pancake batter. And then what I did was I left this all night on my counter covered. And if you're used to making regular bread, this is kind of like making a sponge. So I just let this sit on my counter all night and then we'll deal with this tomorrow. I also took the time to feed my sourdough starter and it was turning out to be such a beautiful day outside. You can see the light reflecting in the kitchen. It's been cold, but very sunny. And I love those days when the sun comes out because it's often very dark and gloomy around here. Now, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm making a chocolate mousse and this was really exciting. It was in the cookbook and I had some whipping cream that I needed to use up. Today was the due date for it. So I needed a cup of milk, three ounces of chocolate, a quarter cup of sugar, 
and a packet of gelatin and that's all going to cook together until it's all dissolved and it actually recommended to freeze this chocolate mousse so I ended up making it into a beautiful and delicious ice cream it turned out so good I'm going to put the recipe below for you guys because you've got to try it To that mixture, I am adding about a teaspoon of vanilla once I've turned off the heat. And this is going to be going into the fridge to cool off. And we'll continue this recipe in a bit. We're in the early evening now and the light hours are extending, which makes me really happy. And I'm done all my after school pickup. I'm sniffing that whipped cream because I need to make sure that it's not gone bad on me. And I'm serving up dinner and I had some leftover biscuits to serve with this soup. And it was so delicious. The peppers really is what made it. But I did add a little bit too much chili flakes. That's my only complaint. Not only did we have enough for dinner, but I also served it for lunch the following day. And I still have a quart of soup sitting in my fridge. So this meal lasted for more than two meals, which is great. I love having leftovers at lunch. So after we were done dinner, I decided to move on with the chocolate mousse. And that chocolate mixture was cooled down. And I added it to my whipped cream. And I also added another half a cup of sugar to that mixture. And now I'm adding it into a bowl that has a lid and I'm going to be putting this in the freezer overnight. Here we are the next morning and I'm getting straight to work making my pie dough. And generally I usually always use the recipe that's on the back of the tender flake box. And that's always worked out for me so I've just continued to use that recipe. My plan is to make two pot pies for two separate dinners. I generally use my food processor when I'm making pie dough because it's so quick. And then I just get it wrapped up in some saran wrap and put it in the fridge. And I find it's always best to chill your pie dough for at least one to two hours before you roll it out. It just lets it sit for a little bit and it's better to roll out when it's more firm. So I generally try to make it in advance. Here is what that sponge for the parsnip bread looks like the next day. It's basically like a giant batch of sourdough starter. So we're going to be adding our salt to this now. And then we're going to be adding lots more flour to make it into a firm dough. In my last video, I was talking to you guys about my trouble with sourdough bread and how oftentimes I don't add enough flour. And I honestly came to the realization what the problem is. I don't like getting my hands dirty. And I've been doing the stretch and fold technique with the sourdough and it works. But I tend to get lazy and I don't add enough flour. And you really need to get your hands in there and feel the dough to know when there's enough flour in it. I've been making my own bread for over 20 years. And I know what I'm doing, but I do tend to get lazy and want to take the easy way out. But I just need to get my hands in there and do the kneading and do the work to incorporate that flour until I feel that the dough doesn't need any more. So that's what I decided to do with this. And 
I just had to get my hands in there and get kneading and get dirty and just be okay with it. And I actually enjoy kneading the dough because once your hands are dirty, they're dirty and you just keep going. So this was quite a bit of fun. So I decided to let this dough rest for a bit. I covered it with the bowl and then I needed to fill up my canister with more flour. Moving on, I have a container here full of chopped carrots and parsnips that I did the day before. And I'm going to be steaming these so that they are pre-cooked before I put them in my filling for the pot pies. So that's just going to go into this pot and I'll get it to a boil and then I'll put it down to a simmer. Here is what my dough is looking like after only sitting there for maybe half an hour. I couldn't believe it. That sponge method really works. So I decided to do a little bit more kneading and get this ready to go into the bread pans. And I figured that making that sponge really boosts up the dough and it really doesn't take long for it to get going afterwards. So I'm just going to give this a light kneading. It didn't need very much. And then I'm going to separate this into three loaves. But I honestly feel like I could have made four because my loaves kind of got huge. So I feel like I could have gotten four with this. There are my three loaves into the greased loaf tins and now I'm going to let these rise a little bit longer and I'm covering them with a damp kitchen towel and they're just going to sit there until they look like they're ready to go in. Look how beautiful it is out there today. I'm so jealous my husband gets to work outside and I'll be out there soon enough with him. But for now, I continue on in the kitchen. And now I'm getting ready to start the filling for my pot pies. I'm cutting up some shallots, some garlic, and some celery. That beautiful chicken broth that we made yesterday has been in the fridge all night. And that means that the fat is much easier to take off the top. So if I use this method again, I'll make sure to do it in advance because I got a lot more fat, I felt like, and I was able to make my roux without adding any butter this time. And the fat was just so incredible. So I loved using that method. To the pot, I'm adding salt, pepper, and some rubbed thyme from our garden. And that's basically the seasonings that I'm adding. And then I'm adding about a quarter cup of flour to make my roux. And then I probably added about two cups of milk, I would say. And then I also wanted to add that beautiful chicken broth. And I let this simmer away, but then I, I ended up needing to add a bit of cornstarch to this. It didn't quite thicken as much as I would have liked. So cornstarch is always great for that. And then there is our leftover chicken and I'm just dumping the whole thing in there. And this was just delicious. I'm adding those steamed veggies. And then I also added some canned beans because I have a lot of those in my storage room that I needed to use up as well. So there's my filling and now I just need to let it cool off. And while it's cooling off, I'll be adding a little bit of an egg wash to my bread and then popping this in the oven. And this is going to make some beautiful sandwich loaves so that I can make school lunches 
and I'll probably pop one of these into the freezer and I can fit two loaves into my bread box. My husband's come in from working outside. I also have a daughter that's sick today. So I warmed up the leftover soup and that's what we're having for lunch today. And we often have leftovers for lunch. And if we don't have leftovers, I usually do breakfast sandwiches or eggs and toast because that's really quick and easy. My husband is always happy for a warm meal after he's been working outside in the cold. So now we're gonna be having this chocolate mousse ice cream for dessert. And I'm telling you, it is so good. I'm definitely making it again. And there are actually several recipes and variations for this in the cookbook. But as it melts, it doesn't turn liquidy like a regular ice cream from the store. It actually turns into chocolate mousse. If you've ever had chocolate mousse, it's very creamy and that's what it turns into as it melts. So it was delicious. After lunch, my loaves were ready to take out of the oven and they really burst. I probably could have made four loaves with this. They were huge and bulging, but you know what? They were absolutely delicious and we've been making toast and sandwiches. It turned out to be a very soft bread, but I honestly can't really taste the parsnips. But I feel like the vitamin content is there regardless. So now I'm working on my pie dough for the base of these pot pies, and then I'm gonna be doing a biscuit topping. So I'm just rolling out my pie dough, and this, silicone mat that I bought on Amazon has been great. I use it all the time and the pie dough worked out so well on there. It's my first time rolling it out on there and it didn't stick and it rolled out very thinly. So I was happy with that. And now I'm rolling out my biscuit dough and this is from my DIY baking mix. I've got a video for this. I'll link it. And I'm using my smallest biscuit cutter to make those biscuits. Now I'm adding my cooled off filling into here. And you could probably honestly freeze this at this stage. But I put my biscuit topping on and then I ended up popping this in the oven for half an hour until it was lightly browned. And then that way I could just pop them into the fridge and then heat them up whenever I was ready to actually make them. And this made two nights worth of dinners, as well as a little bit of leftover lunch for my daughter to take to work. There are my beautiful pot pies and I ended up getting three dinners as well as some extra lunches in out of those five chicken legs. I feel like that's extremely economical. That makes me very happy. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in next week's video.